Hi guys, Andrew here from WildStrong. Um, one of the questions we get a lot from our clients, especially our new clients, is why we're always talking about full range of motion. And sometimes you'll see uh, clients, if they're used to working in a different group, that all of a sudden they're quite surprised to find out that their push-ups aren't quite low enough or what they consider a lunge isn't what we consider a lunge. And uh, they always hear us harping about full range of motion. And they always ask, well, what are you guys talking about? Um, when I talk about full range of motion, one of the things uh, that I try to communicate with clients is that you don't want to have any arbitrary restrictions on your range of motion. So I can think of some uh, classic examples. Uh, first one is when people are doing uh, push-ups or press-ups. For some reason, you see a lot of people who just stop here. And the reason they stop here, I'll get down on the ground, maybe they'll stop around here, is because anything past here starts to get a little bit hard and they just like to do this. But um, when you're working in a pushing motion, you want to go down as far as you can until there's some sort of impediment in the way. So in this case, um, the ground. I can't get any lower than this, so I come back up again. And the whole reasoning behind this is that if you're, if you're working out um, a movement um, and you're trying to get stronger, you want to get stronger uh, across the entire range. If you just arbitrarily stop right here, that means that if you're ever in a position, let's say, I don't know, like door of a temple or something has fallen down on you and you're stuck underneath it you want to be able to push it all the way up if if you get to down here you say oh i haven't trained in this range of motion then you're not going to have the strength there also you're not going to hit the muscle groups that you want so you might not uh, be able to recruit your pectoral muscles as much as you would so maybe you know your triceps are fine but then you don't have that range of motion here um, another example you see quite a lot is when people are lunging you see a lot of people who've been taught just to lunge to about here the problem is, is that in terms of longevity and health and independence, um, you really want to make sure you have that full range of motion uh, down to the ground. Because if you have fallen on the ground, or if you're trying to get up, you need to be strong from here so you can get up from here and come up. And those last few degrees of motion are the degrees that are the most challenging, but those are also the ones that's going to make the movement the most functional and uh, useful for everyday life. Um, so then obviously this goes into the debate on how far people should squat and in athletic communities we've known for a long time that you should do a full range of motion squat hips below parallel if you look at olympic lifters they don't arbitrarily stop when their knees hit 90 degrees that is that's just something that came out of um, i would say misguided academia back in the late 70s but if you look in real life people are going to hit these positions so if you arbitrarily tell people that they have to squat to somewhere like here okay then it means that they're not going to get that same um, strengthening in all their tendons and ligaments around their knees. They're not going to get the same glute engagement. And realistically, they're going to find themselves in those uh, positions. Telling people that they should squat at 90 degrees and they should never go below 90 degrees or their knees shouldn't come over their toes is the same thing as telling people that when you're using your arms, you should never bend your elbows past 90 degrees. So if uh, somebody in a lab coat came up to you and said, oh, you, when you're using your arms, you should never bend past here, you would know that that's ridiculous because obviously the human body is capable of that range of motion and to arbitrarily say that um, you shouldn't move your body in this way is probably wrong. Um, the last thing I want to talk about in uh, terms of range of motion is that one of the issues we see a lot is that we'll have clients um, who will normally work uh, one or two planes of movement. So uh, classically you might see people who work a lot in the sagittal plane or work a lot in the frontal plane and we've known for a long time that you need to teach rotational movement. And obviously from the late 2000s onward, people have been doing rotational movement. But what you find is that people are still missing those little in-between movements, those little movements where if you're not quite doing a squat and you're not quite doing a lunge and you're transitioning from one position to another, you see that people will get really, really weak in that position. So just as you see a lot of people when they get into a lunge here, okay, all of a sudden they collapse. Uh, you'll see similar things. So um, if you're looking at kettlebell work, okay, obviously you want to make sure that people have that nice full range of motion here so they can get stacked joints. But you'll see that in all these uh, half positions, so the positions that you associate with windmills or the positions that you associate um, with Turkish getups and things like that, they're really good because they hit these half positions. So from here, okay, if I shift to here, this isn't really a classic lunge anymore, but I want to have strength in this position. Same thing in my shoulder. Okay, I want to make sure that I have the strength and the mobility to hit all these different in-between positions that aren't going to classically show up if you're teaching just presses and squats and deadlifts, 
but are really important because these are the positions you find yourself in. If you're trying to you know, pick up a sleeping child out of bed, you're gonna end up in something that's not a classic deadlift position. You're gonna uh, find yourself in a position that looks much more like a half Turkish getup as you're trying to pick up a child. Same thing, you know, if you slip or you fall or you're climbing, you're gonna find yourself in all these positions that aren't your classic A, B powerlifting positions, your classic A, B gym positions. There's gonna be ambiguity in the different positions that you hit, which is why when you're training, you wanna make sure that you expose your body to all these other positions at full range of motion so that in real life when you need to use your body, you're capable of it and you're not gonna pull a hamstring the first time you try to sprint or you're not gonna uh, twist your shoulder if you're trying to climb a tree to get a cat. These are the things that make you better at everyday living. Um, so that's why we focus 